Welcome back. Um, it's taken us a while to get this done. I know people have been waiting for it for probably a month or more. Uh, so, but what we did was a metric ass ton of testing in the bolt specifically to rotaries um, and cups. You know, everybody's got their own opinion. Everybody's got their own settings. Fantastic. Our goal was to try to find what the optimal settings were um, with whichever rotary happened to work the best for all the tumblers that we use. Um, that runs from JDS to import straight from China, uh, Yetis, all of them. Uh, so as we work through this, uh, we will talk about the settings and some of the testings that we've done. Um, I will also refer back to when we talk about focus, I will try to link the ramp test video to where we're talking about focus um, and how we determined what our optimal focal distance is. Uh, and just to get this all out there straight up, we're running tumblers. Every tumbler that we have, we are running at 600 millimeters a second in the Thunderbolt. We don't have to slow anything down. We don't have to speed any, we don't have to alter that. Everything we did was at 600 millimeters a second. We picked that number because our Nova will run them at 400 to 500, give or take. And the purpose of us purchasing the Bolt was a dedicated tumbler machine. So that is the way it's set up. That is all we do it for, except for when I get a hair up my rear end to do some sort of other testing because somebody else asked. Our power fluctuates from 60 to 90 percent power. When we do cups, our images are 500 lines per inch. We are using the stock four inch lens. We have a nine millimeter focus that's put into the machine settings into Lightburn. So when we auto focus, it focuses it to, to that level and where we need to be. We don't manually focus anything. Um, and you'll find out we've played with the kilohertz a little bit. We've played with the uh, altering the beam combiner and that focus uh, back behind the machine. We did from plus five to minus five to zero. Um, we were, the all, like I said, the, the goal was to find what the optimal settings was to make life easier for everybody. Uh, that way we didn't want to do any of these hacks. I don't want to take and have to buy a two and a half inch lens and a two inch lens and put the two and a half inch lens on the two inch face plate so it'll slide in there and then redo everything. Some people can't afford all that. Uh, at 200, 200 bucks a lens, if all you're doing is running tumblers like we are, then a four inch lens is what works for us. Some people will swear up and down by the 2.5 and the two inch or the 2.5 and the 1.5 slot, um, we tried to take all of that out of the equation. Now, did I do the testing? Absolutely. Uh, are we gonna talk about it? Hell no. So this is all based on the four inch lens. Yes, the only time we had to get the autofocus out of the way was doing the 40 ounce tumblers where we had to do a full wrap. From top to bottom, um, it sits in the, the rotary at a three degree angle, which gives us the distance uh, from the tip or from the bottom of it to from, from here to here, it sits at an angle. Uh, the autofocus plunger clears this tab, but I'm a few millimeters over this tab from clearing it. Uh, and we tried a variety of different measurements throughout to try to clear that tab and the best fit right now we have is the Velcro and that works for us. Somebody else may bitch about the Velcro. You know what? It works for us and that's the way we're going with it. Um, but if you put this cup straight, the nine millimeter focus clears the tabs. You don't have to worry about that. It only have to do it when you do this. A 20 ounce cup, a 22 ounce cup, all the rest of them. You don't have to use that Velcro. It's only when we're doing a full wrap on a 40 ounce. So um, also our air is on, we keep low air on it 
and we have that elevated, um, we'll hit that up when we do a little bit closer view of the inside of the, the bolt where which rotary that we're using uh, as well. So, so yeah, I just wanted to make sure I covered everything about the, uh, the focus. Um, and we'll get through the, the rotaries that we've tried. We've tried the, the original Rotoboss Junior, the Talon, the Pyburn version three, the low roller. Um, I don't have a Pyburn grip or I would have tried that um, as well. But I know, you know, other people are using it. They're happy with it. Uh, maybe one day I can afford to get it. But right now, this is, this is what it is. Um, so yeah, let's get the hell away from me talking and move into the testing. Okay, just got it in the mail. Literally got the damn email, ran to the front porch. Um, so we might as well show what it looks like as we're unboxing it. Hopefully Robert did a good job. Um, this is the uh, tray for the bolt. The Roco twister tray, I think is what he calls it. God help me, I gave the boss a sharp object. Looks like it's very nicely padded. Showed up in one piece. Damn, he's even got printed instructions. Good job, Robert. I guess we'll have to take a look at that. With color pictures. Very nice, very nice. Now that we've got it open, uh, we told him we didn't, we didn't care what color of these he sent us. So we opted, he opted for black, uh, fantastic. And we'll get this bastard installed and see how it goes. Okay, so we pulled it out of the box and flipped it over. And we got some QR codes uh, to the store uh, and to his Facebook page. I love the Made in USA sticker. Uh, so far, so good. Fantastic. Okay, first cup coming out of the bolt, and we're going to listen to the boss. Okay, so um, we're not even going to talk about settings or anything, but this was the first uh, full wrap that we ran in the bolt. This is a tumbler um, that that didn't work out, so um, it, it it looks crazy right now because it's, it's, it's a full wrap with another full wrap over top of it, but I know what I'm looking for. Um, and we did have a slight overlap um, by, you know, a couple of passes. Um, so that's something that we need to work on with our steps. Um, and, and we'll do that. But right now, looking at this, again, it's hard because for y'all to see the detail because this has another pattern underneath of it. I did not run the same, the same pattern. Uh, but there's places where I ran this file on a similar tumbler in my 3580 and where I can't read some of the, the words um, and uh, where, where things are just a little fuzzy. And I can read everything, even some of these tiny little twisty spots. I can read everything. Um, so that's that's really great that this has picked up all of that detail that I was losing on um the 3580 i was running a four inch lens over there for tumbler for for these 40 ounce tumblers uh we are running the four inch lens on the bolt um as well and i am super super happy with with how this has turned out um i am i'm pretty tickled i cut my speed by 15 minutes or more. Or more um, from the, the, the settings I was using on my 3580 to what I just used on the bolt. So that was one of the whole purposes of getting the bolt was for tumblers. And for me personally, because of the type of machine it is, 
I knew I needed to be able to do, do, a, do them faster with as good, if not better quality. So I am super, super happy right now. Now let's talk about testing. So we've got a, a variety of cups here. This one has been one of the biggest pains that, that we've come across is the white that's the rainbow or iridescent plated. So uh, talking with uh, Thunder Laser USA and their tech support, we got a few uh, thoughts on what to do to try it. And I will walk you through what we did, not how we did it, but what we did, because certain things that we did, you probably shouldn't do. So again, it's the same settings for everything. We're running 600 millimeters a second. Uh, I got 500 lines per inch. We're at the nine millimeter in height, but I've adjusted and marked on this cup. Um, I made my own test and did everything and then see if I can blow this up for you. And then we did 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and then up to 90% power uh, with those settings. People have been talking about um, adjusting the beam combiner, uh, the thing, the little black knob on the tube itself uh, so we played around with that to see what we we got and we went far high far low and kept it in the middle so this is zero at 40 50 60 70 80 and then 90 and 90 we got we got pretty good so at the plus five is right here and then 90 and then the minus five. So looking at all of this, the minus and the plus, it didn't really give us the what we were looking for. Um, at zero, just like the manufacturer said it, at 90% power, we got through it. I barely had to scrub it, which is exactly what you know we all want when it comes to these damn tumblers. Um, so that, that's where we go there. Now we decided to do go another step further. We wanted to start testing uh, distances to see if we could get higher than the nine millimeters. Um, there's the nine millimeter and there's the 10, 11, 12. So um, we, we really didn't come up with a lot uh, of positive things other than nine mil for us is exactly what it needs to be. One step further after that, we kept everything the same, did the same power test here, um, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and then 90, but we changed the kilohertz. So instead of altering the beam combiner in the back of the machine, in Lightburn, under the advanced settings in your cut layers, you can toggle on the kilohertz, and we changed it to 25 kilohertz. And this is what we got at 25 kilohertz. So what we were able to do here at 90, we were able to do here at 80 and 70. I probably could have scrubbed 60 a little bit more but now I've reduced my power 10, 20% by changing the kilohertz. Just as easy to scrub. Um, this was another miserably failed test, but this is also, we're gonna get into why you should not alter your beam combiner. Uh, so again, that's what we've come up with, is right now we're getting extremely positive results with the four inch lens, a nine millimeter uh, focal distance that we've logged in Lightburn, 500 lines per inch, 600 millimeters a second. So, and then changing that to 25 kilohertz. So let's get this out of the way. Now, when we talk about, see, and here we go on just 
one of the 40 ounce, you know, dupes or whatever you want to call it. We altered it same, you know, 40 got a little dull down here, but you can also see how it changed the shape if you're not familiar with that. But still, we're pretty good across this board here for 50, 60, 70, and 80. Um, I skipped the 90 because we never, we've never really gone above 60 except for these tests, but that's at 25 kilohertz. Same over here with the plus and the minuses on them. We did this again, zero. And right now looking at it, zero turned out the best uh, in our opinion. So leaving it to the factory settings. Now, when you start screwing with the beam combiner and you don't remember that you altered it, this is what happens. It may look all pretty, but that is now gray because it didn't remove all the power powder coating because of the wider beam. I don't remember if this was plus or minus, but in the grand scheme, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, when you get to screwing with that and you don't remember that you screwed with that and you're trying to do something else, this is what could happen. Doing these cost me multiple cups because I forgot to set it back after all the testing uh, to the zero, which we had proved uh, worked. So one more reason why not altering the beam that is well more advanced than most people need to get. Uh, and it's a lot of work to dial that in, but just altering the frequency and only upping it by five worked extremely well from what we saw. Here we can see with the nine millimeter uh, focal length in light burn, how we clear the tabs. Now this cup is flat, not uh, crooked. Uh, when you put it in at a three degree angle, um, that tab right there is the only one that does not clear. When we talk about Velcroing uh, the focal block, we just throw this piece of Velcro here and it Velcros up above. But you see what happens to it when you get it in the wrong damn spot, you have a tendency to burn through it. So that's what we talk about with Velcroing the autofocus. Now here's your safety for that. When you're done using it, Take the Velcro off, that way the spring can go back to what it uh, what it likes to, or normally wants to be, and then the machine works better so you can auto-focus. And all I gotta do is remove it. Okay, so with the Junior, what I had to do was remove all of this, uh, and I had to cut one to two inches off. I think it was two and a half inches I had to cut off of this. Um, to make it fit in the bolt and that fit inside either the uh, with the drop downs or inside of the Roku tr twister tray. I also had to remove the thread um, and now this works just by loosening and sliding. Um, so this worked extremely well until you get to one of the larger cups, the 40 ounces, where you have to tilt it and to keep the same focal point. Um, but the problem that we run into is the whole thing wouldn't go down low enough to get me to the proper focal distance that I had with the four inch lens. Now, whether that's a rotary problem or a me problem because of the way we're doing it, I'm not sure, uh, I'm not laying blame with anything. It's the fact that what we found with the focal length of, or the focal distance at nine millimeters inside of the machine settings, uh, that it worked uh, extremely well. So that's what, kind of what we were going off of. But again, this is the full size or the junior. I'm thinking that uh, Jason makes one now that is actually manufactured to fit inside of the bolt. Uh, but I'm not spending thousands on 15 different rotaries to, to see which one works best for everybody. That's just, you know, I'm a production shop. 
uh, we have other other jobs other than this, and this doesn't pay the bills. So, um, so that's what we found with the Rotoboss Junior. Uh, it wouldn't go down low enough to get me the clearance, uh, even with Velcroing the uh, autofocus. So here we have the Talon, uh, one of our test cups that we used. Uh, this is one of the uh, issues that we were running into is, yes, I can push down and I can turn it and lock it into place, but there are times where it wants to pull away. No matter how tight I get it, there are times that it wants to pull away. And I think one of the issues that we were having was these and the, these internal threads. It doesn't really want to clamp. And yes, true, I can open this up. Change these around to try to get it. Uh, unfortunately... I'm not doing this on purpose because I don't want to readjust everything. Um, we have had where the, the jaws have fallen out, just like that. So I can add all the other stuff to it, but the point behind it is something that needs to be as simple as can be. Um, but other than this with the drop-down brackets um, and... A cup that doesn't have these, this worked very well in the bolt. So we also did the, we also have the Pyburn version three. Uh, I did have to cut three inches or more off of it to make it fit. Uh, I know that uh, Lens Digital sells one that fits in here, but again, I'm not buying another rotary. I had this one. So we retrofit it, and so far with this one, it fits flat on Robert's Rocco Twister Tray, uh, which is a fantastic addition to this. Uh, I have, and this is already set. We've been running tests on 40 ounces. I still have some clearance. I can get up underneath of it to go down lower if I need to. Um, but so far, so good. Uh, the Pyburn version 3... Except for its, you know, few flaws that I've, I've griped about before, which is the tower uh, wants to slide down because this doesn't hold and the pitch of the threads that it seems like. Um, but we're making do with it. And I understand completely. I've talked to them about just buying this piece here to uh, turn it to the version four. And it's not worth the, the money to me, and it's not worth the time and energy to put one together as a, as a one-off. So I, I promise you, I, I completely understand that, and we deal with what we have to deal with. Um, but all in all, so far, this is the setup that we've been using primarily. There's the 4-inch lens. Um, you'll notice here on the air, we have it all the way up. That gets it out of the way. Um, if you haven't figured out how to do that yet, there are two little screws over there. You loosen them and slide them all the way up. We keep the air on low, um, and it works great. But again, you know, we have the, the dual air now with external air, so this one stays all the way open. None of this is necessary to make it work. Um, but right now, we haven't had to change steps per rotation. We haven't had to do anything uh, minus cuss about the tower every so often. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's what we're running right now. After uh, trying everything else, the Rotoboss low roller doesn't fit because I would have to take the um, knob and thread off again for that one. And I use that on our Aurora 8 UV. So I'm not doing that to retrofit it to make it sit in there. Um, the, and some of the other, uh, Rotoboss rotaries that we have, the, the Ascend, it's too big to go in there and I'm not cutting it down. Um, so that is, again, this is what we're running.
Hey, as always, if you stuck around this far, you get to listen to me again for maybe a minute. Um, you got any questions, feel free and leave a comment. I'll do my best to answer them. If it's a technical question, obviously email support. Uh, not a damn soul's paid me to do any of this. Nobody's, you know, that, that I don't care about the subscribers. I don't care about monetization. As we always know, if you want to like, subscribe, all of that other nonsense, feel free. Uh, I'm not going to lose any sleep if you don't. So again, I hope you've learned something. And other than that, y'all have a great day.